Uh, hi, this is Joe again with another uh, review. Uh, and let's discuss in this video, we're going to do another TV show. And this time, I'm going to be doing the most famous TV uh, car show of all time. Uh, but it's not fictional. It is uh, the People's Court, the first, which is the People's Court. Uh, and of course, it's made even more famous from the movie Main Man. We were discussing the, the whole series, including the, the reboot, the one in 1997, and it's the one in the year 2014. <coughs> but the original series, I uh, remember started back in 1980, ran for 12 years. The original, I uh, won the show, and from 19, 1981 to 1993 for 12 years, then George Watt. And of course, uh, recently, the one who broke that streak was Judge Marilyn Millian, who was a cool judge on the people's court now. And let me tell you how long ago this was. This, this was a show only one half hour episode a day. Uh, sound like nowadays, we just about every court show, a TV court show. From George Julie on now ha shows uh, two episodes a day. And two, because uh, George Julie and some of the other core shows, uh, except for the except for George Mathis, uh, all the other core shows or they show two half hour episodes back to back. But uh, in those days, you just show one episode a day, and that's it. Because I guess in those days they thought it was silly to air two episodes uh, back to back or, or whatever. And it, it didn't happen with the people's court with Jeff Rotman uh, Rot until maybe the last four, four years, uh, three or four years. And on the original one here in New York City anyway. Uh, but throughout most of the most of the run, I think that in the first uh, ten years, nine ten years, you only get one episode a day, and that's it. If you lock, if you miss it, tough luck. Uh, of course, the, um, I set the stage for all the other car shows that came on the air at that time. And eventually, by the end of the eighties, you saw a lot of uh, more car shows, and of course, everyone. When the people's court died, that's when our court shows were dying out. By the time the people's court in its, its original one, but then uh, I think like two years later, two or three years later, there was another court show named George Julie that came on. It's been on the year ever since. But um, if it wasn't for the people's court originally, there'd be no George Julie or no George Joe Brown or any of the other shows. Uh, but on the people's court, he had some pretty. But warmly, it had some infamous cases. Uh, well, not, not, not much of cases that make like the actual hell nights, really. But uh, most of it had to do with like, I mean, most of the cases came from Los Angeles County uh, because uh, that's where the show was filmed. So they took cases from that area for the most part and the shows were. Or, or take the shows and, mo and most of the episodes you had two uh, two court cases which covered about like 15 minutes of the show in a half hour show <coughs> because there was some time when you had like a full show um, that the case took up practically the entire uh, episode but the most infamous case on the original show was a guy went sued for 75 cents because he got a flat beer the case, and I, and I, and I believe he won. Uh, the, ca the case was when a guy goes into a convenience store and he buys a beer. And that's how long ago this, this case was where you could buy a beer in a convenience store for 75 cents. I mean, ha how many people today can buy go into a convenience store, go to the, you know, the freezer when, you have, when, when the store sells you know, cold drinks, like soda or whatever, beer or water, and you get a for 75 cents, you can't even get a bottle of water for 75 cents in the convenience store or a bodega or something. So, but this guy did, and he uh, found out that the beer was flat. Uh, so he sued for the price of the price of the beer, and I think he won. Um, the other 
infamous case that I remember from the original one of the show was when uh, oh, the, there was a woman who slept at her apartment for a couple of months with a couple of young college girls and when she came back she like told her new for a couple of months something like that she, co she comes home and her, the apartment was trashed and a cigarette burns in the furniture and the carpet and she found an apple in the toilet which was the whole audience cracked up and Rusty the bailiff got level you know, you know, Rusty was the original bailiff who, uh, on the people's point, he died a few years ago. Uh, so, and he, and he had, uh, he laughed, the whole column busted out laughing. Now, because that is implying what, what she meant by that. But she literally meant an apple in the toilet. Uh, those are two cases I actually remember, and the, uh, explain that, I think she, I think she also won. Uh, her uh, but there are also cases at the end of the series where you had dealing with uh, baseball courts, you know, really, uh, the was in 1993, uh, was cancelled. Let me tell you how popular the people's court was, and even by the time it started, uh, people were talking about the show and everything else. The first television show that they actually did a people's court spoof was the Jeffersons. The Jeffersons were stored on the internet when the people's court was stored and they actually did, did like a people's court ripoff on an episode of the Jeffersons with Tom Willis suit George with a room in his pants and a truck to stay in his pants. Then of course they found out that Tom was actually responsible because he left the candy bar in his uh, pants pocket. But but Florence gave him the idea oh what are you do go on this court show and hand it out. Uh, but that was one, of course, naturally, of course, the show, after being one the year for seven years, became even more popular because of a little movie that eventually won the Academy Award for Best Picture, and it was Rain Man. We guess what Dustin Hoffman's character was looking autistic and said, oh, wow, uh, it goes ten minutes to walk, man, it goes five minutes to walk, man, it goes... He cuts down the minutes when the show comes on. And he was obsessed with watching the, watching the people's sports show. So, on his camera was. So, of course, the, the show got more publicity and got higher rating than five years later. It was canceled five, within five years. And um, what they did was they decided, just because of the publicity that the show got from Rain Man, they decided to do shows from all across the country. But on tape of weaker shows in various in actual courthouses across the country. I think they did one in Houston, they did, they did in. Uh, Boston, or according to Boston area, I think the Atlanta, but most famously they did it here in New York City. And, well, whenever it was taken, they took a local reporter from the local news uh, station that it was on. Whatever channel the people's quite having to be in that city, particular city, uh, they took a, a local reporter and asked them to help out in the particular cases. Uh, so here in New York at that time, they had the tapes and week episodes here in New York City. They took the local weatherman, Mr. G. Uh, for those of you who are from the New York City area, you know who Mr. G is. Uh, he, he's like a weatherman legend in this town. Cause he's been doing weather for more than 30 years in, this, in New York City. And he was working for, for a local CBS affiliate then. And that's when the People's Quarrel was, that was the channel that the People's Quarrel was one. So Mr. G helped out, and the show was filmed in the Long Island City Courthouse in Long Island City, Queens. It wasn't filmed in Manhattan, surprisingly, it was not filmed in Manhattan, it was not filmed in the Bronx, it wasn't filmed in Brooklyn, it was filmed right here in Queens. And I know where the courthouse is because I passed it on, on this number 7 train going into Manhattan. Uh, so, like I said, after the show ended, 1993 for four. I thought that was going to be it. I thought the show was not going to be back on anymore. That's when it had to be in reruns on cable channel, cable station, or something like that. Um, but then, in, four years later, in 1997, because of the popularity of George Jr., he was only one year for, I think, a year or two at that time. Um, most of the people's court decided to, re to revive the show. 
and I think that because they felt that maybe George Walker was too old uh, to do it anymore. So so he so they decided to go with a new judge. And instead of like I said earlier, the original people's court was filmed in L in LA, California. They decided to film the show in New York City or New York City area, which is still is I, I believe it still is today. I believe somebody posted on one of the people's court uh, videos of the actual court case. I believe it was from the Connecticut. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but I believe it's from the Connecticut or at least the New York City area somewhere. And so they decided to have a former mayor, uh, Mayor Ed Koch, who passed away that 2013, do the do the show. And the thing is, there was more of a like his New York personality. Uh, how he dealt the ca had dealt with the cases, and he only lasted like two years. But uh, one th one thing that he uh, what they did was not only did they bring the show back, but they expanded it to an hour. And not only was it expanded for an, to an hour, but it was an interactive uh, show because there was the beginning of the internet age in 1997. And what they, what they did was, I think, when they actually taped the cases, you can vote on who you think should win the case and not only that but they added on the bottom of the screen at least for the two years that that catch was on the show or at least the first year and a half it was on the show they added sarcastic comments on the bottom that was written on the bottom of the screen and there was also a spy net I believe it was the software that was used for the, for the internet post on the bottom of the screen to see who, who the people who were watching the sign the cables on the internet simulcast who they think was uh, should win the case. And not only that, but they had Harvey Levin, who was the original uh, Negro, uh, he was like the, the, the Negro Zor, or, Le or legal consultant, I should say, uh, on the original series, the original one on the show. Now he's a producer and he interviews before uh, each case or, or a decision. Before and after each decision, uh, John Harry, uh, Harvey Levin would interview the people out on the street. And he interviewed people since the film, show was shown here in New York. He filmed uh, the man on the street stuff outside and then eventually inside the Hand Mall in New York City, which is about two, which is in the Hell Square area, which is in two blocks away from. The main Macy's on 34th Street. It's like a two, it's like a 32nd Street, 33rd to 32nd Street in New York City on Broadway. And so he interviewed people, and I was on a couple of the episodes to be shown on television. We did the man on the street stuff, uh, but fortunately, I can't find those two episodes on YouTube. But I do have them on tape, so I can watch them anytime. But, but uh, I was interviewed. I was actually interviewed twice. Well, when that twice, it was shown twice. It threw once. And but but I was in the experience seeing the show taped on, on TV. You know, seeing it seeing it taped and about like two weeks later, two half weeks later it was on the air. Uh so and and also originally also co hosting the people's quote was local at that time it was a local reporter, or formerly a local reporter, Cal Moore. We used to work on a local CBS station here in New York as well. Um, also did it for about a year and then she left. But when uh, Judge or Ed Koch, I don't know what call him, Ed Judge Koch because he was never a judge. On um, was never really a judge. I mean he was uh, he was a lawyer before he got into politics and eventually became mayor for 12 years in New York. And then of course after he left the mayor's office, he never became a judge after that. So so he never all the other judges you see on judge, various judge court shows, at least they had some experience of being a judge. And Koch never had experience being a judge. So that's why he a lot of people got turned off by, by him when he was the judge on the on the show. But the most infamous case in the history of the people's court and possibly even uh, 
on court television on the court shows was the season opener of the second season of the rebuilding show when Judge Clark was on which aired actually aired the day before Mark McGuire broke the, the uh, Margie Mellon's home run record it was September 7, 1988 and he had the case where a guy uh, and took up about three quarters of the show when the guy when a guy in Florida, this case came from Florida actually and it made headlines across the country and I didn't even know that this case even was being decided on the people's court and doing this show here and then when a guy goes into a nightclub or a, stri or a strip club in Florida and went for a bachelor party and he got whipped back from the stripper's dress I am not, I am not joking and the stripper's name was Tony Peaks and of course it took place and he was suing for like ten thousand dollars which is an unheard of sum for the people's court uh, for pain and suffering for medical bills and everything else and believe it or not folks the stripper won that case and the reason why she won the case was because the guy waited like about like six months before he even went to a doctor and waited, waited too long he took ammo he took various MRIs and on some tests and that, nothing came up but because of that the stripper won the case uh, another case that I remember with, with uh, Judge never really Judge Wagner I remember uh, of course that case that I was on in particular that I was actually interviewed for uh, appeared like a few weeks later and it was a case where a guy decided to be an armed security guard yeah, because all security guards, you know, you know, where it is, they make more money. Because that's when you have to pay for more than insurance because they're carrying a gun on the job. And so, so he decided to call an all guard. But the problem was that he had, so it goes, I know I'm ahead of myself here a little bit. So it goes to a gun shop. And the gun shop owner helped in the process of filing his application. And it was a service he provided was he uh, helped with the helped process the application for a gun permit and of course he f and of course the gun owner, gun shop owner says do you have a gun on the record and he said no and he filled out the application no and then it turned out that the plaintiff didn't have a criminal record um not really a criminal record but he had an arrest record he was arrested like three times and two of them you can consider a violent arrest. One was a, was an assault, and one was carrying a concealed weapon, which in his case was a knife. So of course the judge, the judge threw the case out. Uh, a judge cashed the case out. And like I said, after two years on the job, they just they decided, or judge cashed decided to leave. And but at that time, Judge Judy was taking hold of daytime television and the court show. So to make it funny. With the stick of the judge Judy, the dozens of the people who thought it would be funny to hire a husband who recently retired as a judge in the Bronx Supreme Court, Judge Jerry Shiner. And unlike here, most a lot of the major cities they put the two court shows up against each other. Uh, when they did when they do that here, uh, when the people's court came back on the year, they did do that, have Judge Judy and the people's court up against each other. But uh, at that time, they decided to have two shows back to back. Have the people's court on first at three three p.m. in the afternoon, and then Judge Judy on the four. But in other cities, they had the two shows uh, back to back. Uh, here in the, here in New York, they had back to back. But most cities they have up against each other, and Judge Judy can win, can be her husband in the meetings. But her husband can't find him from Paris about so after about a year and a half. Uh, he he quit the show. And then from March 9, 2001 to 15 years later, we had the beautiful, the like, beautiful Judge, judge Marilyn Milian as, as the judge of the show. And she's been great. I mean, and, and as a matter of fact, if I had to take a choice between Judge Milian and Judge Julie, I'd take Judge Milian every day of the week or twice on Sunday. Say that she's she's prettier than, than Judge Julie. 
And also she's about 20 years younger than Judge Judy, and she looks better in, better in a bikini than, than, than Judge Judy does. I'm saying that right now. Uh, I don't know if you put some experience, but man, I'm taking a choice to who's, who's hotter. It's, it's Judge Melian. Uh, of course, she had, she had only one infamous case that I can remember was a couple of years ago, she had a case where uh, a married couple sued a landlord because for renting out a haunted house. Um, I think that was the, I, I might, the most interesting one from a legal standpoint, in my opinion. But, but she did have some funny uh, moments of getting stigma to people because she comes up with these sayings. Like, when I believe you, you're talking uh, and when that, uh, you talking know, you read the final word Khutzpah. Uh, she would come up with all these lines, and of course they made it more and more and more entertaining and more fun fun to, to watch her than watch um, uh, Judge Judy, which is more fun to watch. My my opinion, it's more fun to watch. It's Judge Judy, I try to watch Judge Judy, try to get in get into uh, watching her, and just can't do it. I literally cannot do it uh, because I found that Judge Judy is a jerk. Uh, she's rude to everybody. She yells and screams. She, she cuts all the Lincolns off. And the Lincolns might get a point for it when you have the day in court and Judge Judy will not do it. She cuts everybody off. I mean, she, I mean that's, why, that's why I can't stand it. Uh, I can't stand Judge Judy because, because she won't let the Lincolns have a day. At least Judge Millian has, has at least the patience to. Uh, no, that doesn't have the that they don't have the they they have the same core. Judge Judy, you know, why not do it? That's why I can't stand it. Uh, but there was one, there, there were a couple of funny moments that the Judge Million had. Uh, I remember this one particular case. I think it was like a dog by thing case, whatever it was. And then the defendant's son was asked to go over to a dining van. It was posted on the wall, and so the million says, okay, I want you to point out to me uh, where, where, what you saw and where it happened on this diagram. So the kid says, oh, okay. So, so sometimes what Judge Million does was sometimes he gets off the bench, goes over to the diagram, and talk to the litigant. We 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 this with the diagram. Oh, you see, the point like this, and move, take call, you know, toy calls to see, you know, the answer of this diagram. I says, okay, what's the big deal about that? So, uh, well, a 15 year old kid so, uh, sees it just come off the bench. And sometimes when Judge Millian wears a skirt, the her robe only goes to about like knee length on her. And of course, you see another leg, and she has big legs, by the way, and everything else as well. <laughs> so, so, well, that's what's me. Uh, so the kid does a double take. He actually goes like this, you know, check, you know, checking, checking him out. And so of course the judge reacts to that and she says, "You checking out my legs?" You know, you know to, to him. And the whole phone busts out laughing. Even the kid's father busts out laughing. And so, so she puts her arm around the kid and says, "No, no, I just, you know, let's see the." And, and so I think she was kind of flat, and this kid was checking him out. Uh, but, but, it was, but it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. That, that's what I like about this, this judge. It's a personality and a sense of humor. Um, more than, of course, like I said, ju the Judge Judy, because I, like I like her personality and energy. She's not bad to look at. They've already stated already. Uh, but the uh, thing that, uh, that's why I like, like Judge Judy, I still like watching the show even today. Anytime I have a chance to watch it, I watch it every, every day if I can. And because, because that's how good the show is. And it still holds, it still holds up all these, all these years later. And, and uh, if anybody has a chance to watch, watch the show, watch the people's court, do it. Because you, uh, it's worth watching. It's, def it's definitely worth watching. Uh, especially, I, I also remember that sometimes when she would start up with a dog, 
when somebody will bring in a dog in the car, a dog bite case or whatever, or if a dog gets hit by a car, uh, sometimes the person will bring in a dog. And sometimes they're going to have a pet, pet the dog. Uh, and it's because of one, one particular case where somebody born in a python, literally born in a python, and takes the python out of the bag, and she says to the bailiff, well, the bailiff's name was Douglas, said, hey Douglas, do you know, remember when sometimes they come off the bag to pet the dogs? He says, yeah, we're not going to pet that. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the type of um, personality or sense of humor that she has. But that's my um, review, and I went a little long. And that's my review of the um, People's Court Show. Uh, please rate a comment on, on the uh, video. Please subscribe to my channel and please uh, uh, forward this or, or link this video onto your Facebook pages. Thanks for watching.